is Director of Housing Services at Housing Nova Scotia, but I'll just tell you a little bit about Housing Services. They're responsible for policy uh, development, research, as well as program design and delivery of the province's home repair and home adaptation programs, new rental and rental preservation programs, rent supplement, cooperative and nonprofit housing programs. So Neil's been with Housing Services since 2006, serving as Senior Policy Analyst and been the Director since 2010. He's been with the Government of Nova Scotia since 1997, uh, working in various positions with the Department of Finance um, in the Fiscal and Economic Policy Branch. He's been... Um, uh, with the Statistics Division and the province's focal point with Statistics Canada and in Fiscal Policy Division working on equalization and other fiscal transfers. So welcome, Neil, and thanks for uh, coming. Thank you. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So um, my presentation this morning is on the uh, on a housing needs assessment that was done for, for Halifax. Uh, Halifax is officially known as uh, HRM, Halifax Regional Municipality, but they've been trying to rebrand themselves uh, to kind of drop the regional municipality and just refer to themselves as Halifax, so I will probably do the same. It's uh, just a lot easier. Um, so uh, just a bit of an overview about what the presentation is about. Um, we're going to provide some background context to, to the study. Uh, and we're going to look at the assessment. So there were four major areas, uh, demand analysis, uh, supply analysis, and housing affordability, uh, gap analysis and future needs, and kind of the, the next steps where we, we go from here. Um, <clears throat> so just some details about the project <coughs> itself. Uh, the other day I mentioned uh, in our, our provincial report that uh, in uh, 2015 uh, kind of uh, was, saw the major launch of the Halifax uh, Housing and Homelessness Partnership, which is a group of eight bodies that have come together to work on both affordable housing and, and homelessness. And so the, the groups that make up that, that, uh, that body are uh, the, the province through Housing Nova Scotia, the federal government through CMHC, the regional municipality, uh, the uh, major children's hospital in the area, the IWK, our capital health uh, uh, group from the Nova Scotia Health Authority, uh, the Investment uh, Property Owners Association of Nova Scotia, uh, the Affordable Housing Association of Nova Scotia, and the United Way. So uh, the purpose of the, uh, the study was to provide a benchmark uh, for kind of how to go forward and what the housing situation in, in, in Halifax looks like. So I think uh, at the time there was certainly uh, no shortage of data available, but it was not certainly brought together in any one spot. Um, the project funders for this study were uh, the municipality, uh, Housing Nova Scotia and CMHC, and uh, the, the project management was done by the City of Halifax. They did all the procurement work and the, things of that nature and started in uh, November of 2014. The study was actually awarded to uh, SHS uh, Consulting, and they uh, also had some uh, uh, sub-consultants uh, working on it, JOSA Economics and uh, CBCL. And uh, in keeping in mind in the study, they looked at an environmental scan, which include the uh, municipal plan, which is focusing on greater uh, housing density in the peninsular area of Halifax, and uh, the municipality's role in Halifax. Our mayor, uh, Mike Savage, is a particular champion of housing, uh, which is a little different than the role the municipalities played a little bit in the past. Uh, also keeping in mind our provincial housing strategy that was launched in 2013 and some of the work that's been done by Housing Nova Scotia to implement that strategy since then. Uh, the project deliverables were a, a final report, uh, proposed, uh, well actually a statistical update report so the intent is for each year to update kind of the stats and the status of a number of things that are going on, as well as the preparation of, uh, of fact sheets for Halifax uh, CMA. The Halifax CMA is essentially the same as the Halifax Regional Municipality and the eight geographical areas that the study covers. Uh, the last statement there... Oops, and the last statement there speaks to the final document. The report is actually available on the Partnerships website. And one would think, well, why wouldn't you just put that up on the slide? Well, at the time we were working on the presentation, the website wasn't available yet. But the website is actually uh, 
housingandhomelessness.ca for anyone who's interested. So uh, this is essentially what uh, <coughs> what HRM, or Halifax Regional Municipality, looks like. It uh, covers uh, 5,850 square kilometers, and uh, there were eight particular areas that they looked at. For the purposes of the presentation this morning, we're really just going to look at it as a whole, as opposed to getting into the particular areas. Uh, it's interesting in that uh, kind of the, the middle section in there is the Peninsular Halifax and the downtown Dartmouth, that's what they're referring to as a regional centre. and That's where the bulk of the population, the most density lies. Uh, data sources for the study consisted of uh, Statistics Canada, uh, CMHC, the municipality itself, uh, stats from Housing Nova Scotia, other provincial uh, government departments and uh, stakeholders and focus group uh, participation. And they kind of looked at the study on the basis of, uh, with this in mind, a housing, <coughs> housing continuum, which is made up of uh, emergency and transitional housing on, on one side in the non-market housing sector and uh, market housing on the, on the uh, right side of the, of the chart showing rental and home ownership. And we're going to get into more of what that looks like when we talk about the, uh, the supply of housing in Halifax. So... The, uh, the needs assessment looked at, uh, again, I mentioned uh, demand analysis. The, there was a number of fundamental questions they wanted to ask. So with respect to uh, demand analysis, they wanted to say, what is the nature of housing demand and need in the municipality? Uh, for supply analysis, they wanted to look at what is the nature of housing supply in both the market and non-market area, and what are the current housing gaps in the municipality and where is it located, and that's what they were trying to get at what the housing uh, affordability analysis. Uh, the key, another key question they wanted to ask is what will housing market look like in Halifax in the next five to ten years? So uh, we'll focus in a little bit on the, uh, the nature of housing demand in Halifax and we've broken that up to look at sort of three uh, major groupings, population, households and economic context. <coughs> So uh, in Halifax, uh, regional municipality, there's just over 400,000 people, 402,433 to be precise. And between 2001 and 2011, we saw a 9% increase in the population. Uh, what's interesting when you look at the age breakdown is that we have seen a, uh, an actual drop in the population in the age cohorts of 0 to 14 and 35 to 44. And uh, we've had a sharp increase in the 65 and over group. Um, we're seeing that uh, there's a big uh, grouping. The seniors of uh, 2016, 2021, and 2025 are all in that sort of middle group, the 55 to 64 and the 45 to, to 54. I find myself in that grouping. Um, a couple of other uh, uh, notable pieces there are within, uh, within HRM, uh, we have a, an Aboriginal population of about 2.5%, 9.1% uh, are visible minorities, and we have about 2,200 uh, immigrants in the 2012 to 13 period. Uh, in terms of households, we have uh, 165,000 plus households in Halifax, and uh, what we've seen is uh, uh, the, the number of households over the same period of population is uh, increasing faster than the population. And we know that uh, from our census data that every two of every three households is either a one or two person household, so that the, uh, the, 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 num the, the household size is actually getting smaller over time. And we know from the previous graph as well that the population is aging and that uh, the number of uh, couples with children has actually declined over the last 10 years from 30% uh, to 25.3. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, lone parent households have also declined from 9.3 to 8.6%. In terms of the, uh, the economic context, <coughs> our chart shows our uh, average and median household incomes, which are... Uh, Roughly uh, for for all households, uh, just under eighty thousand uh, dollars. For two person households, it's roughly about ninety thousand in terms of the average income. And for one person incomes, it drops quite a bit down to down to about forty thousand. 
Uh, overall, there is a, a fairly positive overall economic outlook for, for Nova Scotia and for HRM. Uh, there is a bit of a, a dual economy in Nova Scotia. Certainly the HRM, the urban area, has a bit more of a robust economy than, than other areas of the province. Um, we have a number of big uh, projects. Uh, we're redecking uh, the, one of the major uh, bridge spans in, in, Nova Sco in Halifax, the McDonald Bridge. Uh, work on the, uh, the maritime link. Uh, strong exports and growth and natural gas production. And uh, we seem to have a lot of construction cranes all across Peninsular Halifax. And uh, I will say I kind of regret that I don't have it in my slide deck, but even from my own backyard, I can see a major uh, crane uh, and not too far away that's working on a major, uh, major high-rise development. And I don't live on the peninsula. So um, with that, though, um, the unemployment rate is about 7% in 2011. Uh, that's up a little bit. Uh, for uh, quite a long time, uh, unemployment in Halifax was roughly about 5.6%, and in the last little while, it's jumped up to 6.8%. Well, now it's finally reached 7%. So despite that growth that's occurring, we're, we're seeing uh, a bit of an uptick uh, in unemployment. Participation rate sits at around 69%, and uh, another major factor that's just coming on stream is the Irving uh, shipbuilding contract, which we... We expect we'll put some pressure on housing on the peninsula as uh, a number of people come in to work on that contract uh, and are looking for, uh, for housing in, on the peninsula of Halifax near the shipyards. Now, in terms of, uh, <coughs> uh, of the economic context, uh, the report speaks to uh, a number of uh, income deciles, and uh, we're going to see that again a little bit later. But... Uh, if you were to ask the question of uh, who are the households falling in the three uh, lower income deciles, so those making 38,571 or less, we'd see that 60% of all one person households fall in that grouping, 25% of two person households, over half of all renters, 45% uh, of all uh, lone parents that households, and 48% of households that are are led by youth maintainers. Uh, moving on to the uh, the nature of the supply, uh, in that in this section we're going to look at uh, dwellings, uh, trends and starts, market housing and non-market housing. So, when, <coughs> as I mentioned under the household section previously, there's 165,000 plus units in Halifax. Um, We've seen an increase uh, in the 10-year period of about uh, 14%, and we have about annual average starts of about 2,500 per year. Um, we've seen uh, starts have sh shifted uh, to higher density dwellings, and what we've seen is a, a shift from single-family dwellings to to apartment rental as well over the period. And uh, yeah, in uh, 2014, for example, 61% of all starts were, were rental units. So we do have quite a a robust uh, rental market right now. In terms of kind of the what is, uh, the tenure, 34% uh, is uh, private rental and 62% are home ownership. 7.4% uh, of those are ne need a major repair and uh, a, a large number, 50% uh, of the home ownership is uh, is older, it's built before 1980. So we have a, a number of the older homes, which is not surprising given uh, uh, Halifax is one of the older cities in Canada. Uh, in terms of uh, owner homes, we have 51% uh, of the, the housing stock are single family dwellings. Uh, we were talking last night at, at dinner about kind of the different average price of housing. In Halifax for an existing family, single family home, it's about 27.5 or 200,700 uh, and uh, 500. Uh, for a new, uh, new single detached home, it's about 376,000. In terms of our rental uh, housing market, 24% uh, of uh, units have increased over time. Um, two bedroom units make up about half of the stock. Uh, vacancy rates in Halifax right now are about 3.8% uh, for all units and 46 for two-bedroom units. And the average rent for a two-bedroom unit is just over $1,000. And the average rent has increased quite a bit, 49% uh, since 2001. 
Uh, rooming houses are in uh, sharp decline in Halifax, and that's um, a major issue for, for uh, folks with some affordability uh, issues there. Our secondary market is uh, just over 15,000 units, and the overall rents there are slightly, slightly higher. Uh, in terms of the municipality is uh, targeting 25% of all new units to the regional center, so they're really trying to increase the, uh, the density of Peninsular Halifax and 50% to the urban areas around the regional center, so again, uh, just off the peninsula. Uh, currently, there's uh, 88 uh, proposed projects involving about 13,000 units, and half of these are in the regional center and account for about 30% of the total number of units. Uh, in terms of some of the land supply issues, uh, survey results and some of the focus data speak to some of the private sector uh, uh, participants in the study, noting that there's a number of uh, issues with the, with the development of the land and the, the approval process and the amount of time it takes to get through. In terms of uh, the non-market housing, there's uh, 5,700 units of, of social housing in, in Halifax, of which equates to about 4% of the overall market. Uh, 4,100 units are owned by the province, and we have another uh, 500 rent supplements that are in place. Uh, we have about uh, 2,300 roughly on the wait list, of which about half are seniors. Uh, a number of the, the buildings in place are older buildings and require a number of investments to uh, to bring them up to a, to a better condition, which is happening now. Uh, we have a lack of public housing for uh, non, uh, for, for single individuals, so certainly we have a public housing program for seniors and we have a, a program for families, but we don't have very much in place for single individuals, which based on the demand side is shown as a growing uh, part of the, the demand area. In terms of the emergency shelter piece, uh, had a decline in shelter usage in the last uh, three or four years, um, and a big part of what we're seeing there is because of the, impl uh, the implementation of what we're calling a housing support worker program. So we have a number of shelter agencies that have been able to uh, hire individuals to assist uh, people going through the shelter system to find permanent housing uh, outside, of, uh, outside of the shelter system, and the shelters themselves I figure this is a major contributory to why the, uh, the shelter usage has declined. So this is back to that chart that I showed before. Only uh, it shows that, uh, again, the 4% of non-market uh, um, non units, of which consists of about 200 shelter beds, uh, 450 units of supportive housing, and 5,700 units of, of, uh, of uh, public housing. And we have about uh, 55,200 units of rental housing and just over 103,000 uh, units in terms of home ownership. So what are the, the current housing gaps? So they're related to uh, household income spent on housing, core housing need, uh, market affordability, and we're going to look at some of the constraints in providing housing as well. So in, uh, in terms of the affordable, affordability analysis, in 2011, we'll look at the, uh, the number of households spending uh, more than 30% of their household income on housing. Uh, the biggest group, of course, was the non-single-person uh, families, uh, 43%, uh, and then followed by... Uh, low and parent families at 38% and non uh, and two-person families as well at 34%. Um, it's interesting that the multiple family group is only about 13%. And when we look at, again, the, those deciles that we talked about earlier, um, about... Uh, uh, I guess 95% uh, of, uh, of, of, of those in core housing need are, are in, that, in that particular grouping, spending more than 30% of, of their income on housing. Um, what the study showed is that, of course, there is a need for non-market housing, as about one in four, 20% of households in Halifax 
uh, need non-market housing, uh, earning less than $38,572 in 2011. Uh, and again, we talked about the same groupings, uh, uh, senior-led households, uh, one-person households, uh, renters, uh, persons with disabilities, and aboriginals. Uh, in terms of uh, core housing need, it's interesting, over the same period, um, there's actually a slight decline in core housing need from 2001 to 2011, from 16.3% to 13%. Uh, representing uh, 20,410 households. Uh, when again we look at those in uh, core housing need, again it uh, reflects the, uh, the uh, single family, uh, single individuals that uh, have the greatest number, followed again by, uh, uh, in this case, senior uh, senior led households and uh, um, one par uh, one uh, lone parent families. This is kind of a kind of a funny uh, slide here. Uh, I'll speak to it while I show you the next one. So this speaks to uh, kind of uh, the whole uh, piece of affordability by income decile. So in terms of market housing, if you're in the first two uh, deciles, you can't afford home ownership or uh, market rent. Uh, in terms of uh, rental market housing you can begin to afford, uh, I think there's actually, there is a mistake in the first decile there under monthly rent that should say 427 rather than just 27. But uh, aside from that, uh, if you're a household in the third income decile earning above uh, $40,000, you can afford to pay average market rents. If you're an existing homeowner, uh, you can afford uh, existing housing up to the, uh, if you're in the, uh, sixth decile are on, and new home ownership from the seventh decile on. Uh, just in terms of an overview from that, uh, one in four households were spending 30% or more of their income on housing. Uh, one in five were spending less than 29,000 in need non-market housing. And in 2011, one in eight were considered to be in core housing need. Uh, in terms of uh, some of the the, uh, the feedback and uh, the uh, the interviews and and questionnaires that were done, some of the constraints that uh, stakeholders reported on were in terms of providing affordable housing were a slow planning and approval process, a cost of development fees, restrictive planning and zoning uh, bylaws, increased transportation costs in rural communities, uh, infrastructure capacity, and limited supply of developable land in the urban core. Uh, now, just to speak for a moment to the, what the housing market will look like in 10 years in, in both the uh, future population and future housing. Uh, the projection that they're looking at right now, we, we, we spoke earlier about just having over 400,000 people in 2011. They're projecting about 434 in 2019, 449,000 by 2024. And some of the trends, uh, again, are the aging population. So that 65 to 74 group will be the fastest uh, of the groups that are growing. Again, we're seeing smaller households. Uh, again, couples with children uh, are in decline. And one in two person households will continue to increase. Uh, the study looked at that there'd be, uh, <coughs> in terms of what's planned, there's 20,000 new homes that are on tap going forward that their development applications in for now. And what they're looking at is the need for more affordable housing options, uh, needs with specific populations groups, uh, need for more non-market housing, uh, shift. Uh, I think the study also looked at and considered that there was adequate supply, but sometimes it was in the wrong place and sometimes it wasn't affordable. Um, demand for uh, new home ownership is to continue. So again, while the number of uh, single-family dwellings has been on decline, there will still be that demand, but it will be at a much lower rate. So some of the key findings from the study were that uh, the study provided a good foundation for understanding Halifax's current and future housing needs. 
but some additional research, of course, was required. Um, what we found in, in the study was that there were still a number of gaps despite the number of the data that was available. One of the other key studies, uh, findings, as we talked about earlier, was that one in four have an affordability issue. And uh, we also note that uh, from as a housing provider, as Housing Nova Scotia, we can't solve the affordability housing issue on our own. It will require a fair amount of collaboration and leadership among all levels of government and involvement from the private and non-sector groups, and hence some of the involvement with that partnership group I mentioned at the beginning. Uh, also, uh, private rental construction sector continues to be strong, and we have fewer people using the emergency shelter system. So there's been quite a decline in the number of bed occupancy rates, a uh, decline in the number of persons using shelters, and uh, in July of this year, we announced that we're going to move ahead with a Housing First initiative that will assist uh, uh, chronic and episodic uh, uh, homeless in, in Halifax. So, uh, oops, sorry. In terms of the next steps from from the study, uh, there's a development of uh, of an action plan. Um, the affordable housing work of the affordable housing working group of the partnership is developing an action plan that is uh, somewhat of a policy response to the study. Uh, I think they're hoping to launch that uh, fairly soon. Uh, there's also a plan to update the statistics that are found in the study on an annual basis. And uh, the, the, uh, the, the housing and uh, uh, the partnership is developing a website. As I mentioned, it's uh, housingandhomelessness.ca. That part is, is uh, under development and done. And uh, that pretty much concludes the presentation. So thank you. Thanks, Neil. Um, are there any questions? Duncan. Thank you, Neil. Um, Duncan Hill, Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation. The, um, how much would you say the uh, results that you just uh, showed us here were skewed by the peninsula and, and uh, you know, weren't reflective of the outer, outer regions? Because I imagine you would have had to take that look and say, hmm, big, I imagine a different picture of the uh, housing needs outside the peninsula area. Um, the, when they did the study, and I didn't really cover it in the presentation just due to the time, but they did actually do a pretty in-depth look at all of the, the, uh, the eight areas. Um, so it's somewhat skewed in the sense that the municipality has a, a development plan that's looking to try to push more towards the regional center and the urban areas. Um, uh, some of the other uh, the areas, particularly in the rur what they're calling the most rural area, um, there's a number of development uh, capacity issues there that somewhat limit development. Um, but uh, there may be a bit of skewing because of the, the regional center influence for sure. Hi, uh, I'm just wondering um, about the, uh, no, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Um, the 61% uh, as a proportion of rental starts is really significant. So uh, I think that was a 2014 figure. Is that a fairly new phenomena? And uh, uh, It's fairly new in that uh, up until I think around 2008, uh, most of the, uh, the development of, of, uh, of market housing has been in the, the single family um, mm -hmm. and the home ownership side. And it's really kind of shifted since 2008 to the, to the more on the rental side. Do you anticipate, if I could just ask a follow-up, um, a, a sort of moderation in rents somewhat? Because it, it, it would seem that uh, rental increase over the last 10 years has been pretty significant, so not entirely. Um, I would expect that there may be a bit of moderation over the next number of years. There's still a number of projects that are currently under construction now, so there'll still be a fair amount uh, of new units to come into the supply, supply now. So as they come on stream, I would expect that it will moderate somewhat. Hi, Matt Mikett from Mantua Housing and Community Development. Uh, for affordability, you had chosen the uh, third decile. Was there a reason that was chosen as opposed to your program income limits or the hills? Um, 
Uh, I'm not sure why the consultants use that particular figure. Um, they're, they're pretty precise figures right to the dollar as opposed to our, our income limits are, are pretty pretty rounded. So I'm not quite sure why they picked those particular levels. I think it probably reflected some uh, like 30% of income of a certain grouping. Neil, uh, I the proportion of, of, of purpose-built rental starts was, was absolutely fascinating, of course, uh, especially for those areas of the, the, the country where that just isn't happening. Uh, do you have a, a sense as to, to what part of the, the, the financial equation is, is, is driving and, and making that happen? Um, sorry, could you... Could you repeat that? Sorry. I, I'm, I'm really thinking about the economics of, of, of producing a, a purpose-built rental. Right. And, and, and the fact that in many places, even with lower interest rates, it yeah. just isn't happening. So why is it happening in Halifax? Right. And that's a, a question I was thinking might get asked. I don't really have a good answer to that right now, which is kind of unfortunate. But... Um, but, it, but you're quite right that I understand that there's a, a lot of the focus is more on condo development in other areas, and that really hasn't happened to the same level in, ha in Halifax. It's really been more on the, the, the rental market side. So we'll try to get an opinion on that for you, and we'll, we'll get back to you. Well, it's, it's, it's kind of interesting given the, the relative level of your, your vacancy rates that, that, that you're still getting purpose-built uh, purpose rental. Rental housing. Yeah, that's amazing. If you, if you want to come back to Ontario and do some magic, uh, come on. Absolutely. Um, we'll go to Carla. And, and then to you. I can present a theory. Okay. Theories are <laughs> and, good. Um, there's a lot of universities in Halifax, mm -hmm. and a lot of the people who come out of those programs, some of them stay, and they're looking for rental housing. They, they might get a fairly good job, and they're looking for maybe an upper, sort of a little bit higher income, because some of the rentals are a little bit uh, more um, focused on, like they're higher, a little bit higher rent than the norm. So that, that might be one of the stimulators, and also some of the aging population moving from their single family homes. There's not a lot of, a lot of the rental is not in like big apartment buildings. So that is an injection, a recent injection, I think. Now, I'm just yeah. postulating here, so um, the bit that I know about Halifax. But I think that that's sort of an area, a demographic that hasn't been well served, and that certainly there's an impetus to retain because they've often gone to school and then left and people and Nova Scotia wants to keep them and I think that generally there's a, an incentive to keep with employment but um, they have to have a place to live so I think that that may be stimulating some of that just a theory yeah. well and uh, certainly a lot of the new development is more even though it's, it's rental but it's more higher end um, so um, there may be that higher end is creating more opportunities in some of the older older buildings that we have, for sure. Chris McClellan, <clears throat> Canadian Home Builders Association. I was curious if you have a rough idea of what sort of in-migration numbers you would get around the, the Irving contract as opposed to filling those jobs locally. Um, not sure the consultant looked at that specifically, but... Um, uh, at this point, much of the work on the Irving contract has been more at uh, the design level, so your naval architecture and and uh, number of supply contracts and things like that. So um, uh, my understanding is that um, not so much on, on the frigate piece, but on some of the patrol vessels, they've actually just started to cut steel. Um, so um, I'd be curious to see kind of what impact... Um, on that particular piece as they start building the actual ships uh, draws in some some folks. Uh, I think there are probably a number of very specific trade areas, different kind of uh, welders and, and things of that nature that uh, we probably don't have locally that will have to come in from outside. But I'm not sure what the specific projection of what they're expecting uh, to be coming in because of that. Are there any other questions? Um, thank you very much, Neil. Thank you for your presentation.